Hey everybody, this is Diane. Today is Friday, the beginning of Memorial Day weekend in the United States, which means flea market season is in full swing now. So there are big sales this weekend. Um, I'm planning on going down to the stockyards on Monday. They're open Sunday and Monday on holiday weekends, but I doubt that I would have time. It depends on what time I get up on Sunday morning. Uh, I might try to go down Sunday morning because it's supposed to rain Monday. So uh, anyway, that's what I'm planning on. But then um, the lady that I bought all those paper dolls from, the stacks of paper doll books and things, and um, the scrapbooks with the children's greeting cards from the 1940s, um, she has her own place set up with a couple of tents and a shed and she has she does house clean outs and she and her husband have tons of stuff there and she just opens that up for a sale every now and then and she does it this was her first one this year and um, so anyway she texted me and invited me to come a half hour early before they opened at eight o'clock this morning so I was there at 7 30 um, and she invites you know a few other people that she knows are interested in specific things. So anyway, she has so much stuff. She has jewelry, she has fabric, um, books, paper dolls, old papers, scrapbooks, just um, furniture. I don't even look at that stuff, like little pieces. So I bought some stuff today and I'm going to show them to you. So if whatever you're interested in, is probably here. I have fabrics. I have trims, including vintage crochet. I have a few paper dolls and a few books. And then I have uh, assorted paper ephemera, vintage paper ephemera. So if you don't want to see the fabrics and the trims and stuff, forward on to the next thing, because there's probably something here. If you're a junk journaler, there's probably something you'd be interested in. So let's start with the fabrics. This is a beautiful mint green eyelet fabric. Oh, it's got little eyelet design all the way through it. Just a little rose of it. And it's quite a big piece. She charges, she said it would be uh, a dollar a yard, but um, I don't know. She didn't open it up to see how how wide it was so I don't know if she charged me one or two dollars for this but it's worth it it's so beautiful and then there's this one so this one isn't a full fabric you know a full width of fabric but it's got this finished edge and it's peach and it's gorgeous I love it it says there's two yards of it here I don't really know what she charged me for. I thought she would actually charge me more than um, the dollar price that she had because these are eyelets. And I know that there were some silks and things that were probably pricier, but I don't know. I didn't pick them up. So anyway, I love those. And then there's this wide eyelet trim. There was a lot of eyelet there, but I have... I don't know, I could have gotten more, but I just, oh, this is the right side. I just wanted these colored ones because they're unusual. You know me and my eyelet. I love it. Eyelets and Rick Racks. All right, then I think the rest is just fabric. So there's this, it just looks vintage to me and I just like that print. I don't know why, I just do because it looks vintage and it's quite a big piece. So she probably charged me $2. This I thought would be fun with uh, little golden book journals or readers. It looks like children drew with chalk, but on red. It feels like uh, polished cotton. Uh, I'm going to wash all of these, although they, they seem clean, but I always wash them when I bring them home. So I don't know if it'll still have that polished look to it, but I really like it. This one is a vintage fabric, and it's I like the colors. It almost feels like a feed sack fabric, but I don't think it is. It's got this little horse and rider on it. <laughs> pretty cute. And then there's this, I thought was quite pretty. 
I got a package of vintage um, cheesecloth that I can dye. It's 2001, so it's not that old, but it was, I don't even know what she charged me for it. No more than a dollar. And this is two yards. Isn't that pretty? I will be putting some fabric bundles in my shop once I get these ironed and then, you know, um, cut up. This one is really sweet. It's a small piece. Really sweet. And this is vintage and stained. Um, it's partially cut, but it's old and I like the look of it. And it's a big piece. So that's the fabrics. Now, the trims. I didn't know how much she would charge me for this. It's a whole card of it. I'm gonna have to hand wash it because I think it's delicate. But I think she only charged me $2. I don't know, no more than four. But isn't that pretty? It's like a dotted Swiss and this pleated organza or something. It's kind of stiff. I don't know how to describe it. Let me let me find a piece that's not all crumpled up on the end. Well, kind of all crumpled up. I don't know what's gonna, there, this looks nice right here. When I, oh, it's in smaller pieces. When I wash it, it it's gonna need to be washed. So I don't know what will happen to it if I have to iron it after but you know, I'll do what I have to do. Um, there's quite a bit here and I really think it's pretty. She only charged me a dollar for this and I love it. I don't know how much is there, but it's probably at least three yards. And I love this. And there's quite a bit here, a couple yards. Isn't that pretty? Now, I started to pull things out of this. And then I just thought, well, it won't hurt to ask her how much she would charge for the whole thing. And that kind of surprised her. <laughs> so she let me buy the whole container. So let's just go through really, really quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on it. That's neat. And this is... I don't know, it's a bib and collar set. Isn't that neat? There's rickrack with tatting around it. There's some tatting. This little crochet. Uh, this flower. I want to keep that. There's another little partially crocheted piece. I don't know if it was finished. This is a peach crochet. I don't think we'll go through everything in this box, but this is just some yarn. It must be attached to something. I don't want to start, um, might be attached to this. I don't want to pull on it and unravel it, undo it. So let's find it. It goes with that. Isn't this neat though? All this stuff. Oh, I love it. It's a big piece. This is a big piece. Nice wide one. More tatting. yellow. Almost looks like bells. Like this edging. These need to be washed, hand washed, because they smell vintage. Look at this one. Oh, that's really neat edging, and there's a ball of it. This is going to take me some time to deal with. This is pretty edging. All right, so she charged me $45 for the box, and I think it was well worth it. Oh, now we've got 
this thread coming loose. It's not attached to anything. All right. That's pretty. So some are handmade and some are not. Oh, here's a peachy colored tatting. It has a thread on the end of it. Here's a brighter orange. Look at that, that's so soft and pretty. sure what that's for. It's a little piece of eyelet fabric or eyelet trim. Looks vintage. This is some lingerie, part of some lingerie. It looks like it was cut up. Isn't this fun? So don't you think this was worth $45? Uh, There's a lot of stuff in here. And she would have charged, she would have gotten a lot more than that if she'd made me pay for her piece by piece. I wouldn't have been able to get everything, that's for sure. These are so pretty. And I don't know how many people would be in the market for this kind of thing. So she got a good deal too. I took it off her hands. Let's just say that. This is pretty. Not much of it, but I love that. And this little vintage Rick Rack. Okay, I'm just, there's a little bit more left in here, but I'm just going to put everything back in there. I'm going to have fun sorting that out. I'm not going to have fun hand washing it. Okay. Now that took care of the fabric and the textiles. Let's look at paper dolls. There were a lot of paper dolls and I didn't get most of them. There were a lot of like the newer Barbie paper dolls, like the big books. They're too big to use for journals. And then there were some of the old ones that I would have liked, but they're a little bit too expensive for using, using in junk journals. So I found a few, and this one is Mary Poppins. She's kind of tall for a journal, but I figured she wasn't in a book. She's It's not a complete thing, so she wouldn't charge me much. So I figured I would get it and see what I could do with it. I got this one, Tiny Tots with four dolls. This is 1959. And it's in good shape. So these are cardstock. The dolls are punch out. The other things you'd have to cut out. They're very sweet. She, I think she charged me $3 for it. There were some that I had in my pile, and as she named prices, I would say yay or nay. And there were, there were a few things that I had to say no to, and I wasn't surprised. I just thought, well, it's worth a shot. And if I thought it wasn't worth it for junk journal use, I put it in the no pile. She's patient with me as we go through the things and she's 
busy. There are people there because I always go first thing and that's when everybody else goes too. Um, so this, I don't remember if it was three or four dollars, but it's got a little, um, little red riding hood. These are cut out, not punch out. It's got the story with it. So I could do a whole junk journal around this. Um, I have other Raggedy Ann, or Raggedy Ann, Red Riding Hood stories that I could use and then it just include all of these pieces in a journal. That would be fun. It says $8.50 here, but I know she didn't charge for that. Um, Raggedy Ann, I've had this one before, and she is big. It's too big for probably for most junk journals. And I sold the whole book before, and I don't know if that's what I'll do this time. I just can't resist Raggedy Ann stuff. I think this is the one, yeah, they look like photographs of fabric that were made into, you know, like cut into clothing. And then I'm not sure how they do it, but it looks like photographs of fabric. Because they add gathers and textures, um, folds and stuff to the drawings or the photos. And then this one, I did pay $10 for this because it's a special one. They have lace-on costumes. So these are the dolls. This one has a bent neck, but it's not horrible. And this one um, looks like it was torn off and glued on. And some of the paper is gone off her arm. <clears throat> but I have an idea for using these in a journal. I'm thinking, see, and, and, and her ankles are taped up. So they're not in terrific shape, but they're not horrible. And the clothes are in good shape. And there's no yarn with them. But these dolls were dress-up dolls with, you would sew the clothes on, just like a lace-up card. And I don't think that the yarn is here. But what I was thinking was I could make a large, soft, squishy fabric journal with a big pocket on the front and put the doll in the pocket on the front and then include the clothing within the journal. Wouldn't that be a fun journal? And the clothes are sturdy. They're not in bad shape. I don't know why the clothes look so good when the dolls are so beat up. Must be the... <laughs> Must be the little girl that owned it didn't dress them up very much. See, that's not even removed. I didn't realize that there are some that aren't even punched out. These just fell out now, so these were never used. Maybe the lace-up things are underneath this. I didn't look underneath that. Nope, nothing there. So, I mean, you could use any kind of yarn, but it won't have the little plastic tips on them so the yarn would fray. But I think that would be a really fun journal idea. Tell me what you think about that. Now we're going to look at the books, and then we'll get to the assorted vintage ephemera. This book... Making Fun for Everyone, a comical entertainment. Fun and jokes for little folks, open to all every day. Lots to see and nothing to pay. <laughs> it's cute. I think she charged me $4 for this. But I loved the drawing. Oh, look. He's getting his tail brushed. Wash and brush up, $2. There's a puppy hiding from the ducks or the geese. Really cute pictures. It's completely falling apart. So I will not mind cutting that up and making things with it. Baby Animals Real Cloth Picture Book. 
1952 and 1955. So it's in really great shape for 1955. Or maybe it's a reproduction, but it is, it's the fabric. And I thought the pictures were super cute. <laughs> I just love using these fabric pages in journals. I don't usually buy coloring books, but I loved the front of this one, and I liked the pictures inside. It's color by numbers. I don't see a date. Oh, 1954. Yep, 1954. So the, they're drawn in a blue, light blue, and it's got the chart Oh, right here. Red is number one, green is number two. But I thought the pictures were very cute, and the pages are extremely fragile. Then I got Alice in Wonderland paint book. It's got some water damage. Got some coloring. Most of them are blank. Barnyard Babies, 1948. It's got damage up here. I wonder how much I could just wipe it off. Yeah, that's just dirt. I'll be able to clean some of that off. I'm glad it's not mildew. Oh, they're so sweet. Look at the chipmunk. Oh my gosh. Who's the illustrator? Don't know might say on the back. Oh, I love these pictures. There's a little skunk. Copyright James and Jonathan Company. Doesn't have anything about the artist. And the animal picture book. This one was more like, I don't know if it's fabric, but it's a different, it's a thicker textured paper. And this is a just regular paper, 1946. Look at the goat. I love the goat. These are gorgeous. And my two favorite books, I got Raggedy Ann and Andy, but it's record albums, little 45s. Got a couple pages in here. And another 45. There's a cookie bush. And I could not believe I found this. So, uh, Danielle from 11 Dancing Dandelions just showed yesterday. I'm filming this on Friday. So on Thursday, she showed the cookbooks that she had just made. And she had made one with this little golden book. And I absolutely loved it. And look, I could not believe that it was there. This is a 1950 little golden book. Pictures by Corinne Malvern. Looks like it's the beginning of Dr. Dan. No, this is Dr. Mike. <laughs> Corinne Malvern uh, illustrated Dr. Dan, too, and Nurse Nancy. This is so cute. And I could not believe it was there. Just sitting there. And I think she charged $2, maybe 3 for it. And it goes for a lot more on eBay. 
Now the miscellaneous ephemera. I got two postcards. I wasn't sure how much she was charging for them, so I only grabbed two. And this one got bent in my bag, and that was my fault. But she charged a dollar each, so I'm glad I didn't grab a bunch. But I love the pink flowers, and I love that pansy. And I got this little pamphlet from B&M Beans, because I love the picture on it. The True Story of Old Fashioned New England Oven Baked Beans. served with brown bread there. How to prepare a New England baked bean supper. Menu, baked beans, brown bread, codfish cakes, corn relish, pickles, salad, Indian pudding, tea, coffee, and milk. It's quite a feast. I got one nylon hairnet. There was another package. I didn't know how much she would charge, and I'm, I believe she charged a dollar, so I should have gotten them both. I love that picture. So if it's still there the next time I go, I'll grab the other one. This was just an envelope, Montgomery Ward envelope, which I love. I always grab, if I can, grab the ones that have printing on them like that. Maybelline Cookery. I loved the picture on the front, the gingham. I don't know how much she charged for this. But it has pretty, I don't even know what Maybelline is. I'm sure it has maple syrup in it. Maybelline syrup. Still don't know what Maybelline is. You have to add Maybelline to make the syrup. So anyway, there's that. And then the Baker's Best Chocolate Recipes. I think she charged me $2 for each of these. Look at that. Fun chocolate. Mmm. Yummy. I got one receipt. Just a loose receipt from 1889. How to Transform Old Furniture. Transform Magic by DuPont. The pages I thought were a lot of fun. And, oh, here's another postcard. Wonder Shredder Recipes. I just liked the front of it. Guess there's no pictures inside. Kind of beat up, but that's pretty cool. And this January uh, 1947 calendar, I love that dark green. I thought I could use that in collage, and I got some paper bags, corn grits, corn meal, and victory plain flour. There were, there were bigger ones that she charged more for. This one says five, but she didn't charge five. I think she only charged one or two for each of those and maybe three for this. I don't know. But then there were bigger ones that she charged more and I didn't take them. And I got two sets of card games, children's card games. And I don't even know what this game is. They didn't come in boxes, but there's some fish there and a seahorse and a peacock aren't they pretty fox and canary And then I grabbed this one. I didn't even look to see. I figured with this guy and that name, he must be from a cartoon or comic. I am not familiar with him. But when I got home and looked at them, I'm familiar with a lot of the other characters. There's Wendy, the good little witch. 
Casper the Friendly Ghost. I don't know what HFC stands for because I don't even know. I know Hanna-Barbera and Disney, of course, and Warner Brothers, but I don't know what cartoon production company these guys were. There's Herman. I didn't, I might remember him. I, he's not solid in my memory, but I definitely remember Casper and Wendy. I remember baby Huey and little Audrey. That picture, I just, I, I know that little girl. I wouldn't have known her name. Tommy Tortoise, I don't know. Buzzy Crow, he looks familiar. Mo Hair, he doesn't look familiar to me. So who's HFC? What's the name of that company, that production company? Do we see them all? Yeah, I think so. But I think that's pretty fun. I'm so happy I picked those up. And the last thing is this great big batch of Valentines. I just took the whole stack. So there are books, but then there's a lot of loose ones and pages that were torn out. Um, I think they go from the 60s through the 80s. So this is going to be the last thing that I show. And if you don't want to see the Valentines... I thank you for sticking with me this long, but we're going to look at Valentine's. We won't look at every single one, but I do want to kind of flip through the books a little bit. Um, I don't know if I found dates on these. I think this one looks like it's from the 80s. But it might be from the 70s. All right, so this, I don't think... These are not the same. This one is glossy. Maybe it just every other page it changes. Okay, let's just look. Doesn't really matter. So this one has envelopes to go with some of the cards. So these are just paper. You can make a storybook. Cut out pages on dotted lines. Place in numerical order. There's no dotted line staple on left margin. Oh, so you just put them in order and staple them. Oh, there's a dotted line. All right, and these are a little bit glossy and they're punch out. And then, and these are paper. And again, they're envelopes. I love these. They remind me of my childhood. I used to love the Valentines that we could do. Somebody cut that. Probably didn't realize they were cutting on one page and cutting through this one. Love the ducks. Let's go a little faster. Oh, love these. Some of these have the same style of art from when I was in grade school in the 60s but they're paper and mine were on a thicker kind of like a thin cardstock so i'm thinking they're from the 70s so these th these are glossier and a little bit heavier this is kind of what my valentines were made out of so i i don't know if they all came in this book or what I guess it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to have fun sorting these all out and making bundles, but I won't sell the bundles till after Christmas. So they're going to be hanging out here for a while. <laughs> We're just getting started in summer. So we've got some Valentines here. Oh, she's one that you fold. These are the style that we had when I was in school. So I don't know, are they 60s? I don't know, they look like it. Some of mine like this would have glitter on them. We've got some pages. 
these are pages that we just saw in that book. But these are different ones. Love her, she's cute. Okay, here's another, well, that's the cover of a book at least. And these you could punch out. These are actually Valentines to punch out. Not seeing any dates. I think this goes with him. Can't keep it under my hat. And then you flip it up. I picked you for my Valentine. No, that's an elephant's trunk. Goes with an elephant. I'll find it, maybe. Looks like it should go on his head. Here's another one that moves. I don't know. I'll have to try to match them up. This one feels pretty full. So it looks like it's the same, same thing. Well, here's that little boy and here's that hat. But this looks like an elephant's trunk. Oh, it goes up here. There's legs that go on him and a tail. Oh, that's so fun. too. Maybe I'll put that in a Raggedy Ann journal. I wish these had a date on them. These make me think more of 70s than 60s for sure. So what, I think I'll just say they go from the 70s to the 80s. I don't think there are, there are 60s designs, I think, but they're reproduced. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. How can I tell? This one is a game right here. Some houses, buildings. Several games. <laughs> These are so fun. These look like they're from the seventies. Maybe they all are. So it just looks like it's 
Well, you can you can tell there were several different books because I had different covers. So some of these are just repeats of the same things. There's that one again. Deluxe Valentine Playbook. I think this might have been the first one we looked at, or maybe not, because I don't remember seeing that. I think this is what I thought might have been from the 80s, but it could still be 70s. It just says published by Guard or uh, Grand Award, but it doesn't have a date. So here it is in a more full. Oh. Same Valentine's. Okay, well, that's a lot of Valentine's. Yeah, that was the first one we looked at. So now I have them a little bit more organized and tidy. <laughs> I feel better about it. So what was your favorite? Do you remember? <laughs> I showed you a lot of things. We've been at this for quite a while now. Wow, sorry about that. But I hope you enjoyed it. And what was your favorite? I have, there are too many for me to pick. I really love these. I love the whole collection of Valentine's. I love all the crochet. Um, I really love that little cookbook, the golden, little golden book cookbook. I'm still shocked that I found it. I love the eyelet stuff. I just love it all. So, you know, I tried not to bring home too much stuff that I didn't really need but everything I brought home was a treasure to me so I you should have seen the stuff I left there and some of this stuff I will be sharing in my shop eventually when I get to it so tell me what you like the best and I'll see you in the next video and I hope you're having a creative day bye